everyone knows that uh, pupil is an aperture in the center of the iris naturally we got um, so many informations you can get from the examination of pupil because it has got direct concern with the visual pathway mostly up to optic tract and can give us a lot of clues about the retinal problems also that's right we normally call it as a keyhole to your diagnosis now if you see that pupil we have got this is the constrictor muscle around the pupil and this is the dilator muscle which are radially arranged this constrictor muscle is supplied by parasympathetics that is third cranial nerve oculomotor nerve where the dilator is supplied by sympathetic system starting from hypothalamus coming down to spinal cord that's a long pathway so it can get affected anywhere that's the importance of knowing all these um, uh, pathways now when you talk about before that you must know what is direct reaction what is consensual reaction imagine now i put a suppose this is a right eye i put a light here the right eye people will constrict that means the right eye people is reacting for direct re reflex or direct light the same time when you put a light in the right eye the left eye also will constrict then you are tell left eye people is reacting for consensual light then left eye direct so left eye is reacting for direct the same time right eye is reacting for consensual but when the right to the k sheet you must tell right eye people is reacting for direct light that means light in the right eye and the right eye people is reacting for consensual that means the light in the left eye just know this this confusion should not be there always remember when you write you must try both right eye people is reacting for direct as well as for consensual left eye people is reacting for direct as well as for consensual now we should know the pathway at least some of the basic pathways you should know this now retina from optic now there is a crossing in chiasma the nasal retina is crossing in chiasma everyone knows that that is a reason for never forget that's the reason for you are when you put a light right right and right the left eye constricts the consensual reaction is because of one of the factors responsible is crossing in chiasma next it comes to my tract but never remember that no you should know one thing the optic tract in the light reflex pathway does not enter your lateral geniculate body it comes out of the tract comes out of the tract then enters your midbrain that structure connecting the midbrain to the tract is called superior brachium now it comes from pretectal nucleus this is the dorsal portion of midbrain that also point also should know dorsal portion of midbrain one pretectal other side pretectal means right and left you got now you can see here from edding response edding response nucleus from that you can see crossings taking place here also between right and left and all so this crossing is called as posterior commissure that means these are all present where in the dorsal portion of midbrain so this posterior commissure also responsible for your consensual reaction taking place in the pupil then getting your spall is a part of the parasympathetic nuclei of your third now nuclei so getting your spall then passing by the third now then we have got finally it comes to the lower division of third now the now to inferior oblique then comes out and ends in ciliary ganglion ciliary ganglion is a classical parasympathetic ganglion for the system that means from getting your spall up to ciliary ganglion is called preganglionic fibers and never forget one more point from retina optic nerve chiasma tract and pretectal up to heading this west that is the heading of spall these are all called as afferent pathway that means a problem occurring in optic nerve can produce problem in the pupil a problem occurring in the tract can produce a problem in the pupil a problem occurring in the pretectal nucleus this up to this heading of spall we can have problem these are all called afferent defects now i told you the ciliary ganglion is one of the parasympathetic ganglions there are four parasympathetic ganglions in the head and the head one is what submandibular then we got um, uh, pterygopalatine ganglions otic ganglion and ciliary ganglion but ciliary ganglion is a for the pupil now from ciliary ganglion the short ciliary scn scn means short ciliary nerves they are all post ganglionic parasympathetics supplying your sphincter pupillae now there are i told there are about four ganglions the most important point of this short ciliary nerves in the whole body is they are the only myelinated myelinated post ganglionic fibers they are the only myelin sheath is there whereas other postganglionic parasympathetics there are no myelin sheaths is a classical thing what for god has created this for the rapid conduction if you put a light immediately people constricts 
You don't see any time lag and all. That's the most important thing. The myelin sheath is there everywhere, which is responsible for the conduction. That is why the people can sit immediately. The only postganglionic parasympathetic in the whole body, which are myelinated, is your pupillary pathways. Never forget this. Next, we have got see the accommodation pathway. This also you must write. When I write in the exams, write a pupil reacting for direct and also for consensual and also for near. You must mention the exam. Near. What is near reflex now? When you look at near point, naturally the pupil is going to constrict. But three things are happening. Eyes have to converge. Pupil has to constrict. The lens has to change the shape. These are all the three components of your accommodation pathway. Here, what happens now? Optic nerve, then chiasma crossing, tract, then comes, never forget, comes to my LGB also. Never forget that. It comes to my LGB, lateral genital body, from that to optic radiations, then to my occipital lobe. Almost is covering the entire visual pathway. From occipital lobe, it has to come to my midbrain somehow. Just know this this accommodation pathway, when it enters the midbrain, Never forget, this enters the ventral portion of the midbrain. This is a classical thing you are supposed to know. I already told you, light reflux pathway enters the dorsal portion. Accommodation pathway enters the ventral portion of midbrain. This point you are supposed to know. I will tell you how. Suppose, for an example, dorsal portion has got a problem, like a pineal body tumor is there. Pineal body tumor can compress the dorsal portion. That time the light reflex will be damaged. But it's ventrally the accommodation pathway is there, so it can escape. That means the pupil can react for accommodation. That's a classical thing called light near dissociation of the pupil. This syndrome called perinaut syndromes, which is going in compressive dorsal portion of midbrain. Now, from the third nerve, same thing from pedigree pollen, all same third nerve only, same third nerve, third nerve only. Now, when it goes to third nerve here, see now light reflex pathway enters 100 percent in ciliary ganglion. Never forget that. Whereas accommodation pathway only 90-80% enters your accessory ganglion and 20% only enters your ciliary ganglion. Ciliary ganglion has got only 20% of accommodation pathway. That is why, imagine now, when a ciliary ganglion problem is there, the light reflex people may not work. Whereas for accommodation, people may work because it is passing over 80% bypasses it. This is also called light near dissociation. This type of problem we can see in Yadis people. Then this is called the long pathway for sympathetics, starting from hypothalamus, coming down to spinal cord, then to superior ganglion, then again post ganglion fibers. Never forget that all these things are coming finally at into your ophthalmic nerve in the carotid, uh, cavernous sinus. From ophthalmic nerve, we have got nasociliary, long ciliary, which is going to supply your dilatory muscle. That means dilatory supply by sympathetic. That's all you are supposed to know. When you examine the people, you must know what. What about the size? Is it regular or not? Is it round? Is it reacting? These three things don't this round, regular, reacting. These three things are supposed to look for under people. When it is round, of course, suppose the sinica is it will be regular or regular, understand now. Then you got what? Reacting to like I already told you. Reacting for direct and consensual and also for near. Now we see when you see the people, one more point you are supposed to see here. The people is dilated, and the same patient you see the people is small. This is called anisocoria, difference in size between two pupils, anisocoria. Then you may wonder, is it physiological or pathological? You should know this. Normal difference, suppose you have got, imagine now, this pupil is 7 millimeter, this pupil is 5. Imagine now, we have got a difference of 2 millimeter is there. Now I put a light, the pupil is to constrict. After constriction also, if the difference between right and left eye pupil, it is only 2 millimeter, it is physiological. Imagine a third nerve palsy is there, people may not work. In that case, if we put a light, the third nerve palsy people will not constrict. The other eye people will constrict because of consensual reactions. That means the difference of two millimeter will get changed. It will become three, four. That is pathological. Always remember one point. When to call physiological anosocaria, pupil reactions are difference in size between two pupils. If they are maintained, in all reactions, the difference is maintained in all reactions, it is physiological anisocoria. If it is not maintained, it is pathological anisocoria. See, now we have got irregular people because of iris sphincter tass and all. Can see now one more. See, now we have got meiotic people, mitriatic people, and you see now colobomas, these are all different shapes. This is called inverted pear shape people. See, now some strands here. You're all supposed to look for this. This patient can have persistent people in membrane. These are all physiological, something you know, during development problems. 
is not a major problem. Patient may not have visual problems, but these are all developmental and don't get confused when you see these pictures like this. If you see that drastically attached to the collarate, that gives us a clue it is not pathological. Now we see this the way you have to see now, right eye now reacting for direct. And you see now the left eye is reacting at the same time you have seen now, right eye was reacting consensual. Right, see now. Now it's called swinging flashlight test. It's called swinging flashlight test. You can see right and left. If you have some apparent defect, is there, you can easily made out in a swinging flashlight test. See, now it's a convergence test. The people is constricting. These three things you are supposed to look for. In any case of people in the examination, never forget is it round? Is it regular? Or what about the reactions? The next point you are supposed to know is I told you swinging flashlight test. See now you can see now here, relative different people are different. You see now here, left eye people start dilating, but you switch the light to the right eye people constrict at the same time, and left eye also constricted. This is called referent left eye has got relative afferent pupillary defect. The problem is what now? Where? Maybe optic nerve, maybe optic tract, anywhere up to midbrain. Never forget this. Up to midbrain, you can have problem of these relative afferent pupillary defects. And one important point you are supposed to know here is. Suppose here the left eye problem is there. Left eye optic nerve problem may be. That's all. Optic nerve right is and all. But what about the tract lesion? Which tract will be involved? Your answer is always remember the nasal retina is responsible for the pupillary reactions and size because nasal is always excess. Nasal retina crossing in chiasma goes to opposite tract. That means in this case, opposite tract has got the right eye tract. In this case, right tract has got the left eye nasal retina. That is why tract is involved. Suppose I'm having a left eye pupillary reality apparent pupillary defect is there. That means the tract is involved is opposite tract. Always remember tract involved means opposite eye only will show relative apparent pupillary defect. I told you now, see now you have near, near reactions. See now the pupil for light is not working. See now here, the pupil is not working now. Now when you ask him to converge, See the people. Now the people start constricting. This is what the problem called light near dissociations. Otherwise, all people is react, reacting for near reflex, not reacting for light. The problem is where I told, I told you dorsal midbrain syndromes. And classical, never forget that Argel Robertson people of Tabis dorsalis. Argel Robertson people of Tabis dorsalis. But is it Tabis dorsalis that we will ask in exams? Your answer is, it is not. Because Tabis dorsalis people will be constricted. That's called spinal meiosis. This is dilated. So it cannot be Tabis dorsalis. That's the way you can answer in the exams. Then what's the importance now? I told you. Even, you see, if you die, patient is dead. Go and see. See, you cannot diagnose. Even if it's a pulse and all, you cannot diagnose with stethoscope and all. But you can give us a clue. The people, see the people. People is dilated and fixed, then you can diagnose death. That is important, even to diagnose death. The people is so important for us. And one more classical example question we ask you: suppose patient is dead at six, eight o'clock in the morning. Night, eight o'clock, you see the person is having a rigor mortis. Never forget in rigor mortis, the pupil is constricted as in other muscles, as other muscles are taking place. A pupil is constricted during rigor mortis because rigor mortis can affect all the muscles, voluntary and involuntary muscles. That is why the pupil is constricted because the constrictor pupillae, it is very strong compared to dilator. So at time, at time of rigor mortis, pupil is constricted. This is a possible exam question for postgraduates. And I hope you have understood something about the pupil. And uh, to talk about people, men, we can take two hours or three hours, nothing wrong. But uh, this is a, overall, if you want to know something in textbooks, you can read. Otherwise, you can have, come later, you can have classes later on. Now, I'll tell you about um, visual pathway. The visual pathway, unless you understand this pathway, you nobody can diagnose your field defects and all. You know the field defects that can take place, is going to be talking, uh, I think the, Dr. Samus will talk about that. The field effects, when you want to understand, you should know the visual pathway arrangement of fibers, everything. Then only you can understand. Visual pathway is very simple. As an ophthalmologist, you are supposed to know the visual pathway. Most important. The arrangement of fibers, what about the blood supply, everything you are supposed to know. But you can't have, within 10 minutes, it's very difficult to con control or something complete. Just I will tell you brief. 
Vishal Pati, how is what's happening now? See, this is Vishal, it's the eye. Then optic now, chiasma is there. See the lateral jerk in the body here. See the optic radiations. This optic radiation going in them, they got two loops involved, parietal lobe and temporal lobes. Then come to the occipital lobe, it's called calcarine fissure, calcarine cortex. Now it comes in the ends in what's it called as a layer called four. Fourth layer of occipital lobe. You got a visual cortex. You got that there also you got ABC. It ends in 4B layer. That is called striate cortex. That is called striate cortex. That is a layer called 4B. That is called it's a white in structure. Why it's white in structure? Structure. It has got one called line of genery, G E N N E R I. Genery is there. That is why it calls striate cortex. Striate cortex or visual cortex. Line of genery is there. Layer number 4B. This is the area of your visual cortex. It's occurring in the calcarine fissure areas. Now we see, I'll be briefly tell you what's happening. The light is falling in the receptors. Receptors are the rods and cones. From there, the impulse starts. They go to my bipolar cells. They go to my bipolar cells in the nuclear layer. So in the nuclear layer is the first order neurons. Now from there, inner plexiform layer and all, come to my ganglion cells. Ganglion cell is a second order neuron. Now from the ganglion cell, axons are starting. They go optic nerve in the chiasma, in the track, and go to LGB, lateral jericulate body. Never forget that lateral jericulate body has got the third order neuron of visual pathways. That means, now we see now, second order axons are coming. These are all what? White fiber tract. White fiber tract. Never forget that. Optic nerve is a misnomer. It's not a nerve at all. It is only a wide fiber tract connecting second to third order. In between, it's called as chiasma and optic tract and all. It's only a wide fiber tract. And moreover, it has got important point here is when you damage optic nerve, when you damage the visual this optic tract and all, it is very, very difficult to regrowth. They cannot regrow. Please remember, unlike your oculomotor nerve, we can have apparent regeneration. Seventh nerve, we can have apparent regenerations. All these things cannot occur in optic nerve. The reason is it does not have neurilemma. It does not have neurilemma. Neurilemma means it's a sheath. So neurilemma is absent. That is why this optic nerve cannot regenerate. Never forget optic nerve is a misnomer. And moreover, see, optic nerve starting from the optic this area. You know this. This is called the distal portion of optic nerve. Distal portion. Never forget that. Don't think from the IE star is called for proximal. That's the distal portion. Anything towards the brain is called proximal. That means towards the chiasma area is only called proximal portion of your optic nerve. See now, when you see the arrangement of fibers in the retina, you see now optic disc. This is called the macula papilla macula bundle come to my temporal aspect. See the arcuate fibers coming and going up in the upper and lower aspect of the optic disc. And the nasal retina coming is. This is the arrangement of fibers in the optic disc. This very classically you are supposed to know even you want to understand in future about the glaucoma field defects and all. See now at the level of disc, what's the arrangement now? This is temporal portion, this is the macula forever, then upper temporal, lower temporal, and we got um, nasal, upper nasal, nasal, lower nasal fibers. This is the arrangement. As you go towards the chiasma, you see now, as you go towards the chiasma, you see the macular fibers, macular fibers coming to be central, central area occupation. That means upper temporal, lower temporal, upper nasal, lower nasal. That means towards the chiasma, the macular fibers are coming in the center of the optic nerve. Never forget this. It's an important point. And moreover, anything, never forget one point here. Now, retina, macula is occupying only 1 by 20th area or space or areas. Now, we have got in the mac optic nerve, it occupies about 75%. That is why whenever you have got an optic nerve problem, maybe neuritis or maybe tumors, the macular fibers are the only to get affected early. That is why you can have a central scotoma to start with in the case of optic nerve problem. These are all common questions in exams. See now, when you come to my chiasma, you see now upper nasal, lower nasal, it's the macular fibers. Upper lower nasal, lower nasal coming, understand now here. Can you see here? And go here and make a bend in the optic nerve of opposite side. These are classical point you are supposed to know, that only you can answer the field effects. This is called anterior genu, anterior genu of Wilbrand or anterior limb of limb of Wilbrand. This is a classical thing supposed to. That means in the optic nerve, this 
sorry, optic chiasma. We got crossings of nasal retinas, but the crossing is not so simple as you think. The lower nasal fibers, after crossing, enters your optic nerve or two millimeter into optic nerve, then come back to the myosin. Similarly, upper nasal comes down, enter your optic tract for some time, and then goes out into the optic opposite tract. This is an important point. One more important point I will tell you: upper nasal, all these things, always a fiber coming from upper retina. Maintains upper relation throughout the visual systems. It cannot change. Lower retina remains lower only throughout the visual system. They cannot go up and all. Is that if you understand this, you can easily pinpoint all the problems. Once you come to the track, you see now. Once you come to the track, what happens now? In the track, I told you. Now the macular fibers. And here after you must tell because the track has got same set temporal fibers. Opposite set nasal fibers. Never forget this. When you tell about that. Temporal means what I told you. Upper temporal, lower temporal. Nasal means what I told you. Upper nasal, lower nasal. That means the upper temporal, upper nasal fibers are coming closer. Lower temporal, lower nasal fibers are coming closer. That means they maintain the upper lower relation again. That is why if you see here, they write only upper retinal fibers. They don't write temporal nasal and all. Upper means what? Upper means what? Same side upper temporal, opposite side upper nasal. Lower means lower temporal, same side, lower nasal of opposite side. This is the way you have to write. See the LGB, same thing. Upper. macular fibers then upper like all these things the same arrangement is continues everywhere upper upper only see now here also the tract see now we got upper retinal fibers now we call it as upper peripheral because macula is that is called central upper peripheral see the lower peripheral like that macula macula these are all central fibers so always remember this way you are tell upper fiber maintains upper relations lower fibers lower maintain lower relations only throughout the visual systems Is a common thing you are supposed to know. One more point I told you: nasal fibers are more. I told you nasal my fibers are more. Imagine my right eye nasal fibers look in the temporal field, and that same temporal field can be seen by the left eye temporal retina. Always remember temporal retina is that means right side nasal retina and left side temporal retina. They are all corresponding areas. They can see the same field in the outside world. Always remember the nasal fiber excess. That means. Nasal fiber, excess nasal fiber has got no corresponding temporal down the opposite side. Never forget that. That means nasal fiber of the one side, excess excess nasal can see some area in outside world. That area cannot be seen by the left eye. That is called uniocular fields. Otherwise called temporal crescent. That is what he has written now here. He said that radiations are all upper uniocular because nasal fiber that is it has crossed. Upper uniocular, lower uniocular. They have shown. This is the way you answer. Understand now? This is all uniocular fibers. Now, when they come to the cortex, cortex you have got upper cortex, upper fiber, lower cortex, lower fiber. The posterior aspect you got macula, posterior aspect you got macula. Then upper, lower peripheral fibers. Then never forget I told you they have got the excess nasal retina, which has not book, not got corresponding temporal retina, comes and get occupied. And the anterior tip of the calcarine fissure is a correct. That means it does not go the temporal fibers on the opposite side. So nasal fiber excess, which can take care of the extreme temporal fields in the eye, is a uniocular field. It has got separate representation in the occipital lobe, anterior tip. You know the reason here. When I have a lesion here, anterior tip alone, I can have only one eye field defect, and the temporal crescent alone may be damaged. Whereas in starting of chiasma, you will have both eye fields. If I want to have one eye field defects, it has to be either in the retina or optic nerve. But we have got one area in the occipital lobe, the anterior tip alone getting damaged. I can have one eye field defect. That means one eye temporal crescent field alone may be damaged. These are all the visual pathways. I think Dr. Thomas will explain you everything. And thank you very much for the nice um, gesture for the students as well as my Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv.